I get many different sources for lessons. This one, thank you Lord Jesus, came from a movie, then a television show, then another movie, because apparently I wasn't paying attention enough to the first two, and then I started writing. And immediately he was at my side, whispering, no, don't go that way, start again. And so I started again. And he would tell me, that's good, that's right. And I would start and continue and restart a section. And he would tell me what was right, what was wrong. Can you see spade over my shoulder? And then I found a beautiful fitting paragraph from the Most Holy Lama that just made it. So today's lesson is titled, How is your faith? Many don't consider the status or health of their faith and faith life. They just go through life as if it was a foregone conclusion that once you've finished living, you go on to heaven or wherever, regardless of what you do in life. To them, to their understanding, it is almost like a lottery who gets into the kingdom of God. Not quite. There are quite simple, basic ways to be faithful and to be faith-filled, to act the loving and to be Christ-like in your everyday life. You need not give away all your goods. You need not live in poverty, though it does help but one or two very distinct and provident changes will accomplish the goal and give your faith life a great boost of health and providence. The first step is, of course, to believe in God. At crisis moments in life, our belief can be tested Many of the clergy, even the bishops and the cardinals in the Vatican, admit that they have had moments of crisis where they have had to come to re a renewed understanding of the Lord and as a result have had a deeper and a greater relationship with him. Many people get angry with God when a loved one dies or when a loved one a child perhaps gets cancer or something such. Or when a relationship of a lifetime breaks down. I had a crisis due to the very human evil, the human ambition, human politics, and very private agenda that many wicked and non-Christian people brought to a building labeled a church but not a place of Christ where these people worked. Their agenda, their overriding ambitions, precluded any religion, and they eliminated, eliminated anyone in their path through any means necessary. I had been in my ministry for over nine years when two of these wicked people simultaneously came for me. At the same time, my husband had demanded a divorce to be with his acknowledged mistress of one of these church groups with which I was, which, with which I was ministry of and in. Oh, faith! Oh, God, where are you now? Why have you so abandoned me when I need you? I screamed. I cried, I begged, and I sobbed. 
the answer came only when I was the most broken, when I was the most open. Meeting with the tribunal for the annulment, he had requested. He who had joined my faith only to be able to marry me. He got custody of all of our church friends and of my church home. But because of this, and because my former boss and my former confessor sponsored him for the annulment, I spoke of everything at that meeting. So healing. And the Lord was there, holding me up. As a result of that tribunal, the annulment was granted. A stone in my heart, as marriage was one of my ministries, and it had been for five years, six years. But the archdiocese also stopped any future marriage that he might want within the church without substantial counselling. It stopped the career of that priest, the wicked, ambitious liturgical director. I was only one of nine of his victims and it required the other wicked one to be removed as well, listing her as not potentially sacramental in any position. She was hired by the wicked liturgical counselor as my replacement. So the easy steps after believing in God. First, pray regularly. Listening or doing these scriptures, reading them daily, is a good start. Be honest, truthful and altruistic. If you concern yourself with taking care of others, there will be no room for lies, bullying, and cheating. If you're truthful, you can live transparently, which will enable you to establish trust and the basis for making friends. We all tend to be driven by self-interest, the trick is to pursue wise self-interest, which takes other beings into account and puts their interests in accord with your self-interests and never allows the green-eyed monster of jealousy and self-ambition to ever enter your life. Keep these in mind. Practice them every day. If you feel yourself slipping, take the inventory and ask Christ for help. For he will help you. Every moment, every time. He understands crisis of faith. He had it on Calvary, Gethsemane on the night before he died. Turn to Christ.